get up and all morning long as we get set for tomorrow night's draft we're comparing some of the top prospects to past players and, and relatively recent ones we kept it to the last dozen years or so with similar grades and measurables and college stats so here's Josh Allen he's a 92 is his grade the frame reminds us of a good young quarterback in the league the accuracy issues remind us of a former first round pick who did not last long Ryan Clark is with us today you want to guess who those players are can we go Wentz and Locker oh my goodness that's exactly right <laughs> That is exactly right. Allen is 6'5". Okay, six five. then. He's 6'5", 237. <laughs> Huge hand, comes from a small school, very much like Carson Wentz. Allen, meanwhile, completed just 56% of his passes during his college career. That is comparable to Jake Locker, who won just nine games in four seasons. So with that thought in mind, we welcome Tim Hasselbeck in with us from Bristol as we all get ourselves set for tomorrow night's first round of the NFL Draft. Tim, thanks for doing this, and let's jump right in. You look like Posa Tim this morning, absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, listen, I'm <laughs> happy is, for you, Ryan. Nice job on the trivia. This is Posa Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all eyes are on, first and foremost, the big four quarterbacks, if you will. If you were drafting mm -hmm. a quarterback in this draft, Tim, which one would you take of those four? Josh Rosen, and for me, it's really not as hard as it seems like some people have made it out to be. When you look at Josh Rosen, he clearly can make every single throw. And that's not just the guy that has a big arm. He has a big arm, but he also has accuracy. And he's also a really smart player. When you watch him play, he rarely, you know, was fooled. You know, he, whether it was a protection issue, whether it was a coverage issue, something that was, you know, uh, disguised. Josh Rosen sees it, and I think that he has all the things that you want out of your quarterback. He doesn't get out and create much offense, but playing inside the pocket, I believe he's tremendous. You know, actually, Tim, I agree with that. I've actually said that on SportsCenter, you know, weeks ago before I came up here. But I don't know if his ceiling is as high as the other guy. When I look at Josh Rosen, yeah. though, he's the guy that's most ready to play right now. Whatever team gets him, gets a guy that they can plug in on week one and have a starter. And if you're looking at one of these teams who's a player away or a quarterback away, that's the type of quarterback mm -hmm. I'd want to draft. Now, real quick, RC, who has a higher ceiling? I think the highest ceiling, if you look physically, you go with Sam Darnold. I think Sam Darnold has all of the arm talent. He's a guy that can move in and outside the pocket. But when, any, when somebody has the turnover issues that he has, to me, those things don't go away. You know, people mention Matt Ryan, and we see those things rear their head in his game to this day. All right, back to you, Timmy. One mm -hmm. of the big stories, obviously, is Lamar Jackson. The beginning of this process, people were – suggesting he was going to be a wide receiver. Now he clearly is going to be a first-round quarterback. What do you see in him? Well, I see a guy that, quite honestly, I think he would have benefited had he stayed in school another year. He's not ready as a passer. I, I called a Louisville game this year, sat in a production meeting with Petrino, and there's no question that he's even saw Lamar Jackson as a runner first, passer second. So he needs to develop as a passer. That is clear, and I, I think that that almost can't be disputed. Now, along with that, what I will say is I think the comparable for uh, Lamar Jackson is Michael Vick. And the truth of the matter is, is that Lamar Jackson's passing is better than Michael Vick's at this stage in his career. So I think he should get an opportunity to be a quarterback, no question about it. And I think there's a really good shot he has some success at the next level playing the position. Tim, you mentioned that maybe he should have stayed in school do you think staying in school is better than actually learning under a, a, a pro-type system and pro coaches? Do you think that that can help him a little bit more than going another year at Louisville where he's already seen as a run-first quarterback past second? Yeah, RC, no, it's a fair question. I mean, look, if, if I was a first-round draft pick, I certainly wouldn't stay in school. I mean, I, I think I was more referencing the idea that, you know, as Greeny alluded to, of, you know, this talk that maybe he was going to play another position. But I think part of the reason was because – he, he needs some development as a passer. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. The running is absurd. I mean, when you turn on the film and you watch the running, it's like, you know, he's in fast forward and everybody else is just in regular speed. And so I think that can be deceiving for some people when you watch him. But, but look, I, I think if he's going to be a first-round draft pick, which by all accounts he will be, um, if that's the case, then, then obviously go make some money for yourself, young man. All right, so there's four guys we believe will go right at the top, and then Lamar Jackson will go five. So let's call those the big five. Mm -hmm. Amongst the other quarterbacks in this draft, Tim, is there one you particularly like? Yeah, Mason Rudolph. I've watched all these guys, and, you know, as I'm watching them, I'm thinking, I don't know why nobody else is talking about Mason Rudolph in the mix with all of these other quarterbacks. I mean, I, I understand there's a lot that Sam Darnold does well. Josh Allen's impressive with his big arm. Baker Mayfield had a ton of production, but... Um, when I watch Mason Rudolph, he's the, you know, the best deep ball thrower in the class. He had a lot of production. I understand the offense is 
um, you know, kind of geared towards that, but he's a really good uh, developed passer inside the pocket. That's hard to teach. Um, I think, you know, playing under center and doing some of those things would take a little bit of adjustment, but you know, in terms of size, ability to make the throws, and really how accurate he is and throw the ball down the field, I was very impressed by him. It would not surprise me if somebody moved up to the late first round to draft Mason Rudolph to get that fifth-year option on him. I agree. Mason Rudolph is a player. Mason Rudolph is also a player, a quarterback. I put in my top five when I haven't seen him in many other people's. Like Tim said, he can throw from the pocket. And even though he played in an offense that – gives you an opportunity to have a ton of production. You watched him make throws to places on the field from the pocket, the same that he would have to make in the NFL. And when you have that sample size, when you're able to see a passer throw at that type of volume, you kind of know what you're getting from that standpoint. So Mason Rudolph should be a lot higher on people's pre-draft boards to me than I think we've talked about on this, on this network and also different reportings. Hey, RC, so if he's in your top five, who isn't? Which, which of the other five isn't? Josh Allen isn't in my top five. And, and it's not necessarily, I don't think that Josh Allen I don't think that he can play, but I believe when you throw the type of interceptions that he throws, when you have the type of game versus power five competition that he has, it's scary to me. When you're Josh Allen and you play for Wyoming, nothing against Wyoming and that team and the Cowboys, but Josh Allen should look like somebody made a mistake. When you see him play against Iowa, you should think he should be on that team. When he plays against Oregon, you should think he should be the starting quarterback for them. And when he played Nebraska, when he played Oregon, when he played Iowa, when you look at his stats, they weren't just bad. They were awful. He, looks like a, he looked like a guy in those games who can't play in the NFL. And you can't do that and tell me that you're going to be a top five pick. And he may very well wind up being the first pick in the draft. Tim Hasselbeck, thanks a million for doing this. Good mm -hmm. to talk to you again. I'm sure we'll See talk again soon. And don't forget, the NFL.